God formed man out of dust, but man formed man out of blood. So echoes the age-old patriarchy, this lineage of sainted stone, this temple built of chosen bone of fathers and their sons. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, favorites of history's tongue, carriers of a covenant through which the kings would come, these are the sweet fatherhood of which the story, our story, always begins. Here we teach our children, Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac Jacob, and Jacob Judah, as if it was a man's loins, the birth to man's frame, the birth to nation. And of the sacred motherhood, history digs its graves. There are some stories better left unsaid, some stories better left unread, for fear of the secrets they carry. For to speak of motherhood is to speak of Leah, the terrible secrets of a nation's true blood. Leah, Leah, wife of Jacob, sister of Rachel, daughter of Laban, and beloved by none. Leah, Leah, the unwanted mother, the lessons deception paid back to our son, she reddens at the recount. How, after seven years' labor, Rachel's wedding feast set, Laban brought Leah to Israel's bed. She cried as he took her, didn't she? Yet slowly, yet softly, yet without a whisper, she gave in. For this was her Abba's doing, a virgin's price for a father's will, a bargaining chip in some greater game for some greater gain, a trade Leah hides to pacify. History hides to pacify, the darkness hides to pacify. You see, in our society, we are obsessed with pacifying, aren't we? We anoint ourselves with some holy oil and call ourselves the sainted priests. Do not speak too loud, you say. Do not speak your mind. Don't offend. Don't object. Just pretend your morals are subjective, your religion's acceptive, your God contained to a cardboard box of relics. So history births yet another silent generation, a generation of cruelty contained, of sins displayed openly, and we, the pacifiers, keep these pieces of our minds to ourselves. We, like Leah, are silent under deceitful oath. As she did not speak, so we do not speak. So silence serves to keep the peace. Yet our reliance on silence is more sinister than it seems, for Leah, the burden of the unloved, does not fade with time. Rather, Leah births a son who carries on in the silent secrets of his mother, who carries on in the silent sequence of the other, whose jealousy rises to plot to kill his brother. These things only escalate with time. So Joseph is sold in Judah's revenge, and history, twisted in silence, pretends that this was simply an isolated incident, an unfounded anger aside. You see, silence always comes with a hidden price. When there are warning signs of genocides that we're ignoring, when there are forest fires and truths and liars and things that should be said, stories that should be read that we have put aside, when this presumption of peace is crumbling before our eyes and we pretend we cannot see the cracks, close our eyes and turn our backs, we are deceived. We are deceived to believe in the peace of ignorance, to believe in the peace of silences, to believe in the peace of the masses, the silence of the classes. We are deceived. We are deceived to believe in a peace to be wary of, this peace of the narrative, this conditional acceptance of our conditions so as to create a story of a land that holds no strife. This is no life we live. This is no life we give. This is deception, a poor reflection of the truth we are deceived. Received. For Jesus did not say, blessed are the pacifiers, that is a fallacy. When our Lord ascended to the mountains and began to teach the crowd a famous speech that would be called the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus did not say, blessed are the pacifiers. Jesus did not say, blessed are you when no one takes offense, when you tolerate and compensate and stupidly pretend, when you're so scared of making enemies that you've forsaken all your friends. Jesus did not bless that kind of peace. That is a fallacy. No, Jesus, son of David, son of Judah, son of Leah, paints a different picture of peace. Peace, not as we devise, not this deception and this closing of our eyes. No, Jesus speaks the mind of God instead and says, 
Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. You see, a misquotation of this single word changes the meaning of the entire passage. Pacifier implies one who is silent, one who will sacrifice morals, who will sacrifice family, who will sacrifice home and self and soul for the sake of tolerance. This is not what God devised. Pacifier implies a thin deception, a blurred reflection of the truth. A pacifier's job is to polish the lie that silence is the same as calm, that right can be the same as wrong, and that apathy can wear the shoes of justice when these are not its shoes to fill. But we, Leah, are called to be peacemakers. Not pacifiers, Leah, but peacemakers. Rise, Leah, speak. Do not let yourself be chained to the lies of silence, to the lies that violence yet ignored will fade with time. Rise, Leah, speak, for the hour of the peacekeeper and the peacemaker is at hand. In the midst of chaos, she rises. In the midst of injustice, she rises. In the midst of sin, in the midst of suffering, in the midst of strife, she rises up to answer. She is no slave to peace. It is a slave to her, for she upholds wisdom, she upholds mercy, she upholds justice, and she upholds strength. She will fight, yes, Fight if need be, fight with heart and soul and hands for the sake of peace. I see this makes you uncomfortable, this oxymoron, yet sometimes peace must be fought for. Not with swords, always, not with blood, perhaps, but with persistence, with insistence, with prayer. Peace is not invited by silence, that is a fallacy. Peace is not invited by chastity and submission and shame. No, it is you, peacemaker, who must invite it. Carve its locks with bloody knuckles until the door is so opened. Let deception curdle to your truth and conflict cower in your resolve. You are a peacemaker, not a prisoner, Leah. Rise and recompense. Bow not your noble head, lest it be trampled. Bow not your convictions, forsake your religions for the sake of inclusivity. No, you are she to whom kings bow. They call for your silence, but you take them down. For peace is yours to form, yours to test, yours to strengthen. So hold your crown. For Sarah was the mother of Isaac, and Rebekah, Jacob, and Leah, Judah, whose children would be kings, whose son would be the prince of all peacemakers. Now is the time to rise, Leah. Now is the time to speak. Call to the injustices of Jacob, to the injustices of Laban, to the injustices of Cain, to the injustices of Absalom, to the injustices of Adam. These are yours to speak, Leah. Rise and take your place among the kings.